Now, a new analysis shows that the six-ton iconic altar stone at the heart of Stonehenge originated from northeastern Scotland rather than southwest Wales. What if Scotland's strangest mystery isn't carved into its stones or written in its history books, but hidden inside the blood of its people? DNA from Scottish bones tells a story no one expected. Dark-skinned hunters with blue eyes, tribes that supposedly vanished but never did, Vikings who left more descendants in Orkney than in parts of Norway, and even genetic whispers from deserts thousands of miles away. It doesn't add up until you realize Scotland's DNA is unlike anywhere else in Europe. For generations, the story of Scotland's ancestry seemed simple. Celts, Vikings, clans, end of tale. But modern genetics has blown that myth apart. In remote highland villages, fragments of 10,000-year-old DNA still survive, untouched by time. A Bronze Age migration wiped out nearly 90% of Scotland's male bloodlines in a single sweep. The mysterious picks never disappeared. Their legacy lives in today's Scots. And hidden in certain families are markers that trace back not to Britain, but to North Africa, the Middle East, even Siberia. This is not the history you learned at school. This is the history written in your veins. And once you see it, you'll never look at Scotland or ancestry the same way again. If you are fascinated by the secrets hidden in DNA, subscribe to Root and Relic, because what we uncover here will change the way you see history. Twelve thousand years ago, Scotland was unrecognizable. Thick glaciers covered nearly everything, carving out valleys and lochs. It was a land of ice, silence, and stone. But when the ice finally retreated, life returned. Forests spread, animals moved north, and then came the first people. They were small bands of hunter-gatherers following the herds drifting north from continental Europe. They were not Celts, and they looked nothing like the Scots we imagine today. DNA reconstructions reveal they had dark skin, blue eyes, and curly hair. A striking appearance by modern standards, but common across Mesolithic Europe. Archaeological sites like Oronce and Kraman show us how they lived, fishing, hunting red deer, and shaping tools from bone and flint. But the real revelation comes from genetics. Some people in the highlands and Hebrides still car carry rare markers from these first settlers. Their DNA has survived for 10,000 years, locked inside isolated communities. This is the power of Scotland's geography. Rugged mountains, scattered islands, and harsh seas kept groups separated for centuries, creating natural genetic vaults. While the rest of Europe was reshaped by constant migrations, parts of Scotland preserved echoes of its very first people, fossils written in blood. Four and a half thousand years ago, Scotland was transformed by the arrival of the Beaker people. They brought bronze tools, farming, and pottery, but their biggest legacy was genetic. According to a 2018 nature study, the Beakers replaced nearly 90% of Britain's male lineages within just a few centuries. Entire paternal bloodlines from Mesolithic times disappeared, overwritten by these newcomers. It wasn't a sudden conquest, it was gradual. Intermarriage, cultural adoption, the slow dominance of new families. In remote highland glens and far-off islands, fragments of older DNA still survived, but Scotland was forever changed. Imagine discovering your own family line simply vanished thousands of years ago. Have you ever had a DNA test reveal something that shocked you? Tell us in the comments. Centuries later, another mystery emerged, the Picts. Roman writers described them as painted warriors, fierce tribes from the north who lived beyond the frontier. They left no written history, only carved stones and a reputation for defiance. For generations, their disappearance around the 9th century puzzled historians. But DNA has revealed the truth. Burials at sites like Lundin Lynx in Fife and Balintore in the Highlands show that the Picts weren't outsiders. Their genetic profile matches the local Iron Age population. 
They were not erased. They were absorbed. As Gaelic culture spread from the West, the Picts gradually merged into it, adopting new languages and names. The vanishing of the Picts was never a disappearance. It was a transformation. Today, Highland Scots still carry genetic signatures that can be traced directly to those painted tribes. The Picts may have lost their identity on paper, but in DNA they remain very much alive. Rome's empire reached almost everywhere in Europe. But in Scotland, or Caledonia as they called it, Rome met its limit. They built Hadrian's Wall, later the Antonine Wall, but full conquest never came. Even so, Rome left traces, not in politics, but in people. The legions stationed on Britain's frontier weren't just Italian. They came from across the empire, Spain, Syria, North Africa. Some settled, fathered children and introduced rare genetic markers into the Scottish gene pool. These Mediterranean and Middle Eastern lineages are faint, but they're still there, detected in families from southern Scotland. Haplogroups like E1B1B, linked to North Africa and the Near East, appear in places they otherwise shouldn't. Rome's presence in Scotland was brief and limited, but its empire was global, and its reach, like its roads, extended farther than armies could march, leaving small but permanent echoes in the Scottish genome. By the late 700s, new sails appeared on Scotland's horizon. Viking longships, sleek and fast, cut through the northern seas. They came not only to raid, but to stay. Orkney and Shetland became Norse colonies. Families farmed the land, married local women, and left behind a genetic legacy so strong that today, up to 60% of male Y-DNA in Orkney is Norse, a higher percentage than in some regions of Norway itself. Their influence spread further into the Hebrides and along the western coasts, where Norse and Gaelic cultures fused into the Galgaels. These weren't simply invaders, they were creators of hybrid communities. Later, the Normans, descendants of Vikings who had settled in France, arrived through alliances, royal marriages, and land grants. Families like the Bruces and the Stuarts carried this Norse-Frankish ancestry into the lowlands, reshaping aristocracy and politics. Scotland's DNA now bore the marks of warriors, settlers, and kings. For centuries, Scotland's clan system was seen as a living family tree a map of bloodlines stretching back to ancient ancestors. But DNA has revealed a more complicated reality. Some clans, like the McDonald's, were vast social networks with dozens of unrelated lineages all carrying the same name. Taking a clan identity could mean survival, land, or loyalty. It wasn't always about blood. Others, like the Campbells, show a true founder effect. Most men trace their Y DNA back to a single paternal ancestor. Geography shaped these patterns. Remote islands like Lewis and Isley acted as genetic vaults where ancient lineages survived alongside newer ones. In these places, you can still find the DNA of Mesolithic foragers, Bronze Age beaker farmers, and Viking settlers layered together in a single community. And some of the traits we associate with Scotland today are genetic signatures the MC1R gene for red hair peaks here. 13% of Scots are red haired and about 40% carry the mutation. More than half of Scots have blue eyes. Lactose tolerance is around 95%, among the highest in Europe. Clans may not always match ancestry, but DNA never lies. It tells us who blended, who endured, and who left their mark. If you could choose, would you rather trace your roots by surname or by DNA? Tell us in the comments. Scotland's genetic uniqueness isn't just history. It's also medicine. Royal lineages carry hints of disease. Robert the Bruce may have suffered from leprosy-linked genes. Later, monarchs showed signs of hereditary disorders. These traits left faint, but lasting imprints in the record. 
In modern times, isolated highland and island communities have become invaluable to science. Projects like Generation Scotland study their DNA to identify rare mutations linked to conditions like heart disease, diabetes, and autoimmune disorders. What isolation preserved for thousands of years now helps unlock medical breakthroughs. And everyday traits remain just as distinctive. The highest concentration of red hair in the world. The striking prevalence of blue eyes. Traits that make Scotland instantly recognizable are not just cultural symbols, they are genetic signatures, carved by history and carried into the present. Scotland's DNA didn't remain confined to its mountains and glens. Over the last three centuries, it spread across the world. The highland clearances, famine, and the lure of new opportunities drove waves of migration. Scots boarded ships to North America, Australia, and beyond. Today, an estimated 25 million Americans claim Scottish ancestry, and worldwide, the figure rises to nearly 50 million. But what's remarkable is not just how far Scottish DNA traveled, but how precise it remains. Modern genetic testing can identify ancestry down to specific islands. A descendant in Canada or New Zealand might discover their roots not just in Scotland, but in Skye, Isla, or Orkney. A fingerprint so distinct it still shines after centuries overseas. Even rare outliers persist. Traces linked to North Africa, the Middle East, and even Siberia appear in Scottish DNA, carried by Roman soldiers, Viking traders, or medieval merchants. They prove that even at the edge of Europe, Scotland was never fully isolated. Its blood has always been global. Scotland's DNA is not a single story. It is a tapestry woven from Ice Age hunters, reshaped by beaker migrants, marked by Picts, touched by Rome, scarred by Vikings, and carried across oceans. It tells us that tribes never truly vanish, empires never fully fade, and history leaves traces not only in ruins or legends, but in us. If this journey into Scotland's genetic past gave you a new perspective, make sure to subscribe to Root and Relic where we uncover the ancient mysteries still written in blood. And tell us in the comments, what's the most surprising discovery your own DNA or ancestry has revealed?